Hello, here we are again. Today, we'll deal with the second and last course about education. We'll see vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. As usual, we'll start with vocabulary. Hello, Mrs. Ben Khalil. Hello, Mr. Dahmas. Hello, everybody. What activity have you prepared to deal with vocabulary today? Our vocabulary activity today is matching words and their definitions. Let's start. As usual, we'll read some sentences and focus on the underlined word because these are the words you are going to match. Okay, let's start. If I pass the baccalaureate exam, I will register at the university. It's necessary to hold a university degree to be a teacher. Serious pupils regularly attend their classes. It's the teacher's duty to assist the slow pupils in the class. The pupils' favorite subjects at school are languages. First, let's read the words and then their definitions. Attend. Subjects, assist, degree, and pass. These words are frequently confused because they look like French words. This is why we have chosen them. Pay attention. Let's read now to see which words start with, uh, which words are verbs, sorry, which words are nouns, and which ones are adjectives, as usual. Yes, the words attend assist and pass are verbs. The word subjects is a noun in the plural. And the word degree is a noun in the singular. Now we are going to read the definitions and see which definition starts with verbs, which one starts with the noun in the plural, and which one starts with the noun in the singular. Okay? Branches of knowledge studied at school help or support, academic title, rank or grade given by a university to someone who has passed an examination, succeed in an examination, be present at. Right, which of the three, which of the definitions start with verbs? Okay, definitions A, C and E. Which definition start with the noun in the singular? Right, definition D. And which one start with a noun in the plural? Definition B. Are you ready now to match the activity, to match the nouns with their, with their definitions? Right, that's correct. To attend is to be present at, good. Subjects are branches of knowledge studied at school, okay? The third one, assist, which is to help or support. Degree, academic title, rank or grade given by a university to someone who has passed an, an examination. And the last one, which is a verb, to pass, is to succeed in an examination. Right, good. That's all for our activity uh, in vocabulary, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalil. I hope you won't, may, won't confuse between these words anymore. The second part of our lesson today deals with grammar. What is in the program, Mrs. Ben Khalil? This time, I won't tell the pupils what our lesson is about because they will have to guess. First, we are going to read the dialogue, listen carefully, focus on the underlined words because they will help you guess what our grammar lesson is about. Are you ready? Let's start. You will hear me with Mr. Dahmas reading the dialogue. Excuse me, madam. Could you help me, please? Of course, I mean, What's your problem? When I do grammar exercises, I often make mistakes with irregular verbs. I mean... I have already told you that you must learn the irregular verbs. It's an obligation. Yes, but the list is so long. 
You don't have to know all the verbs in the list by heart, but you have to learn the most frequently used ones. I'll try to learn them before the test. Be careful, Amin. You mustn't cheat at the exam. It's forbidden. Right? Now, what do the underlined words in the dialogue express? We are going to read the sentences again, and I will give you three possibilities. Choose the right answer. You must learn the irregular verb. Does this mean you are obliged to learn them? You are not obliged to learn them, or it's possible to learn them? Yes, the answer is A. So must expresses obligation. Good. Second sentence. You don't have to know all the verbs. Does this mean it is necessary to know all the verbs? You are not obliged to know all the verbs, or you are obliged to know all the verbs. Right? The answer is B. So don't have to is used to express Absence of obligation means that you are not obliged. Sentence three, you mustn't cheat at the exam. Does it mean you are not obliged to cheat, it's necessary to cheat, or it's prohibited to cheat, which is forbidden? Good. The answer is C. So, mustn't expresses prohibition. Right. Now that you have guessed that our lesson deals with obligation, absence of obligation, and prohibition, let's fill in the table to recapitulate what we have just said. Right? Fill in the table with the language forms used to express obligation and necessity, the language form which expresses prohibition, and the one that expresses Absence of obligation. Okay, let's correct them. To express obligation and necessity, we used must and have to. Good. To express prohibition, we used mustn't. And the last one, to express absence of obligation, we used don't have to. Of course, we can also use don't need to, but we didn't have them in our dialogue, right? Let's practice now. Our first activity is fill in each gap with must or mustn't, have to or don't have to, to get meaningful sentences. Let's read the sentences together first. Sentence one. In the USA, high school students, and the gap, study all the subjects. They choose the ones they want to study. Second sentence, students in the USA, and the gap, get good grades in order to, in order, sorry, not to lose their scholarship. Sentence three, students, and the gap, copy someone else's work because plagiarism is forbidden. Are you ready to correct? Let's correct now. In the USA, high school students don't have to study all the subjects. They choose the ones they want to study. Second sentence, students in the USA must or have to get good grades in order not to lose their scholarship. And the last one, student mustn't copy someone else's work because plagiarism is forbidden. Well, well done. Now, let's move to our second activity. You are going to rewrite sentence B so that it means the same as the one given as A. Ready? Okay, let's start. In Algeria, pupils are not obliged to wear a uniform. Start sentence B with, in Algeria, pupils, and complete the sentence. Second one. It's forbidden for pupils to use mobile phones in class. Start sentence B with pupils. The, last and the third and last sentence, it's necessary for all pupils to respect 
the school regulations. All pupils. All right, let's start now correcting sentence by sentence. In Algeria, pupils don't have to wear a uniform. Second one, pupils mustn't use mobile phones in class. And the third, all pupils must respect the school regulation. Our first lesson, our first grammar lesson is finished, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Malkhili. You're welcome. The second grammar lesson deals with comparison. By comparison, we mean similarity and difference. And Mrs. Ben Khalil is going to tell us how we express similarity and how we express differences. All right. As usual, let's start reading some sentences because you will guess the meaning of the words through the sentences, right? The educational system of England is different from that of the USA. Sentence two, unlike Britain, the USA doesn't have a national system of education. Both America, sorry, both American and British pupils have to attend courses full time. Sentence four, neither American nor British students have to wear a pinafore. Sentence five, in Algeria, studies in public schools are free, whereas or while those in private ones require tuition fees. Sentence six, by contrast to or contrary to the USA, homeschooling is not allowed in Algeria. Sentence seven, like or as in Britain, Education in Algeria is compulsory until the age of 16. And the last sentence, scientific stream pupils and literary stream ones don't study the same subjects. Right. In these sentences, the words that are underlined express either similarity or difference. Classify them in the table. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it together. Sentence one. Different from. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة
اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي سيدنا محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه المقاما محمودا الذي وعدته سئل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الأعمال أحب إلى الله قال الصلاة على وقتها رواه البخاري مع موبيليس اطلعوا على أحوال الطقس موبيليس أينما كنتم قل لا يعلم من في السماوات والأرض الغيب إلا الله وما يشعرون أيان يبعثون مع موبيليس اطلعوا على أحوال الطقس موبيليس أينما كنتم Yes, it expresses
a difference, right? Sentence second, second sentence, sorry. And like, also it expresses a difference. Sentence three, both American and British pupils have to attend. This time it expresses similarity so with both and. Sentence four, neither nor. Yes, this time again it expresses a similarity but in the negative form. Sentence five, whereas and while. Yes, this is, you, this, they are used to express a difference. Sentence six, by contrast to or contrary to, of course, this is to express a difference. Sentence seven, like and as in Britain, express similarity. And the last one, the same, expresses, of course, similarity, right? Let's now move to our activity, our activity. Combine the pairs of sentences using the link words provided at the end. Of course, make the necessary changes. Sentence one. Homeschooled children don't go to school. They don't have teachers. You are going to combine these sentences with neither nor. Pay attention here. The verbs are in the negative. Second sentence, education in the UK is compulsory. Education in the USA is compulsory too, with like. Sentence three, elementary education in the USA starts at the age of six, so at the age of five. Elementary education in Algeria starts at the age of, five, oh, of six, sorry. You uh, combine the two sentences with whereas. And the last sentence, middle school pupils, take an exam at the end of their studies and secondary school pupils also take an exam at the end of, study, of their studies and you combine these two sentences with both. Right, let's correct. Sentence one. Homeschool children neither go to school nor have teachers. Sentence two. Like in Britain, Education in the USA is compulsory. Third sentence, elementary education in the USA starts at the age of five, whereas in Algeria, it starts at the age of six. And the last sentence, both middle school pupils and secondary school ones take an exam at the end of their studies. That's all for our Grammar exercise, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Benkhali. You're welcome. The last part of our course today deals with the sound system. In English, there are letters that are, that are written but that are not pronounced. They are called silent letters. If you take, for example, the word understand, you will see that the, word, the, the letter R is written but it is not pronounced. In chalk, the letter L is written but not pronounced. And in listen, the T is written but not pronounced. Mrs. Ben Khalid is going to have with you uh, uh, some practice. All right. I will give you some words, but I'm not going to read them, of course, because if I read them, it means you don't do any, any activity. I will just say the first word, second word, and then you have to find which word, which letter, sorry, which letter is silent. Let's start. The first word, second one, third, fourth, the next, next word, next one, next, next, the one before last, and the last word. Did you circle which letter? The letter which is silent? Let's correct now. This time I'm going to read them. No. Yes, the K is silent. Wood. The L is silent. Column. The final N is silent. 
taught. This time, the GH are silent. Next word, psychology. The P is silent. Write. The W is silent. Teacher. The R is silent. It's always silent at the end of the word. Training. The J is silent. Final ING, we cannot hear the final J. Work. The R is silent. And the last word, no, no, the one before last, climb. The B is silent. And honest. The H is silent. That's all for today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you, Mrs. Ben Khalid. You're welcome. The, I hope that what you have learned today will be of some help. Next time, we'll deal with the last unit in your program, feelings and emotions. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.